I've been with my spouse for ten and a half years. We think we were married when we were rather young. At the moment, it felt perfect for both of us. Alternatively, she was a young woman. We came to the conclusion that our year and a half together was sufficient. Although we knew we were meant to be together, I'm not sure that's still the case in light of some recent events. I work for a fairly good company. And with my brothers, I own a jewelry company that we started from nothing and have grown to be really profitable, which is always something to be proud of. Although I am aware that doing business with family members can be challenging, for us, it has been an absolute dream. Since we've never been the type of siblings to argue frequently, your experience may differ greatly from ours. However, my wife built a charming cafe where people could come read books, have coffee, and get pastries. She is one of those persons that proudly makes reading their personality and has always had a strong interest in literature. I was so irritated by those individuals before I even met her. Yes, I am a hypocrite, though. Bite me! Since I was attempting to assist her and have paid the rent on the space she is using for the cafe, I must admit that I was pretty enthralled with the notion. The location in a more upscale area of town makes it somewhat pricey. But business is starting to turn a profit at least. There's no more worrying about rent. And that was sufficient to make me smile. That, in my opinion, is the background you require. This is when the real story begins. She approached me to tell me about this new man who had been at the cafe. I can't recall the precise date, but I believe it was around March. She said he was quite attractive. Being a comfortable person, I discovered that the two of us could discuss someone's appearance objectively without it becoming a major problem. But there was something about the way she continued to talk about this person. That was unusual. Presumably, he resembled the kind of manly hero she finds in the genre of smut that appeals to women readers. Yes, she enjoys such kinds of novels as well. I'll never understand why, but it seems like the cheesiest kind of romanticism is what makes those all book talk type women tick. She continued talking about this guy for a while before. It stopped. But I have to confess that the language she used to describe him was a lot like what she would use to describe the chili, Russian hitman, who fell in love with a woman in their apartment building's laundry room. No, that is not a fabrication. That's from a real book one she enjoys reading. That was the end of today. But she told me that he came back the next day and they spoke for a long time. Previously, he was a Serbian car salesperson. But in search of a better life, he decided to relocate to the United States. She said it took him a while to get his bearings and orient himself. He was seeking employment at local dealerships as that was his area of expertise. In ten minutes or less, I discovered that he was tall, blonde, attractive, well-dressed, and clearly had an accent. It seems that he enjoyed reading fantasy novels like The Lord of the Rings and works set in the American West. She cafes customers with me, so this wasn't unusual, but once more a lot of flowery language was used, and it appeared as though she was inadvertently fetishizing him. She eventually stopped talking about him in depth because he was no longer new to her, but it was evident that he was still a frequent customer at her cafe, and it made me feel much better to know that he wasn't considered worthy of lengthy spills every night. In fact, when I stopped by her cafe one afternoon to offer her lunch, I noticed a man who seemed to match the description sitting in in the corner. He was really a handsome person, and I was positive it was him. He went by Ivan, she told me. This is about where things start to get a little crazy. I questioned her what was going on one night when she returned home with a silly smile on her face. She added that Ivan had walked her home, and throughout their conversation they had discussed books extensively. She acknowledged that when he asked to go on a date, she told him she was married and couldn't accommodate his request. She added that after giving me a gentle squeeze on the hand and expressing sincere regret, he departed. It's like something out of a book, she said when I asked her why that was making her smile so broadly. To be honest, I found that portion annoying because it seemed like she was romanticizing their entire exchange. He was a regular at her cafe, so I was unaware of that. They would have to continue communicating practically every day. She might have chosen to inform him that she didn't have a guy, but I didn't want to come across as insecure. So once more, even though I had strong feelings about certain things, I didn't think it was necessary to discuss them. I have to move past my feelings. Isn't that right? After a week or so, my wife returned home with a bouquet of flowers that she immediately put in a vase, which was when I finally saw that this wasn't the case. She said that Ivan had given it to her. Nothing noteworthy. He claimed to have purchased numerous furry co-workers. 
Oh, and he got a job now. She was celebrating her birthday. And because he usually notices how hard I work, he just felt it would be good to get me some. She was attempting to portray herself as a schoolgirl who didn't know when someone liked her. So I felt my head start to heat up as she said that. I questioned her directly if she sensed that Ivan was genuinely fond of her. She thought the flowers were just a kind gesture, but admitted it was clear, especially after he asked her out. And that confused me since, as a guy, you probably don't send flowers to a girl who turns you down. Even as a matter of friendliness, even if it was because she was married, he was still attempting, or perhaps he was attempting, to get under her clothes and cut out all the romantic details. At the time, he was finding it simple to make approaches. I was aware that he would not be stopping anytime soon. I was correct my wife returned home somewhat later than normal two days later. She didn't notify me that she would be running late, and I believe it was over two hours later. She had already missed two calls that went unanswered, so had decided to give it some more time, since it wasn't the first time she had ever arrived home late. However, she arrived at home before I could make a third call, and it was quite bubbly. You won't think I had such a fun evening. She started out by saying that before going into a long diatribe about how she had told Ivan where the museum was and how they wanted to have some American pizza, as he had never had some and had only ever seen it in movies. After that, they strolled and conversed while enjoying pizza and a lot of other uninteresting things. But I let her finish. When she was finished, I asked her if she felt a connection to Ivan. She pretended to be rather astonished and insulted, stating that I was the only one she was drawn to in that way. Of course she wasn't. She explained that she was only attempting to extend a warm greeting to a visitor, who was a stranger in a foreign land with no friends or family around to tour him around and respond to his inquiries. All of this didn't really convince me. I therefore informed her up front that she needed to break up with Ivan. Yes, that led to a major altercation. She talked about how it was being insecure, how nothing was fair, how it should stop feeling threatened, and a bunch of other ridiculous things which was to be expected, even though I was furious. I managed to control my temper and keep it in check, but I didn't back down. I urged her to cease doing anything extracurricular with Ivan. Given that he was a client, it was appropriate for him to visit her cafe. However, it wasn't intended to continue past that point. I asked her to picture herself in my position if a Serbian girl came to buy a bracelet and then decided to take her out for walks around the town and all that kind of. She said I would understand, but I believe we can all see that's a lie. I slept on the couch to cut a long tail short. I stopped hearing about Ivan and all his drama, which was beneficial for my mental health, though no one is surprised by it. Once more, I was aware that she would be chatting to him at her cafe, but there was only so much that could transpire there. Besides, she was leaving for home at her usual hour every night, so I was pretty sure that nothing was going on. And my wife wasn't there one day, and I happened to stroll into her cafe at random. I started to get quite suspicious. Ivan wasn't either. But that didn't really matter, because I couldn't have been certain he would have been there at that particular moment. However, the fact that she wasn't present meant a lot, because that was highly unusual. I considered making a huge fuss out of it, or waiting for her to return, or even asking one of her staff members where she had disappeared. I noticed her and Ivan walking along the street with their arms crossed as I was getting back into my car from the other side. Even though it took all of my strength not to jump across the street, beat the shit out of the guy, and yell at her, I managed to stay in the car, watch them enter the cafe, and then I drove away. That was yesterday, and I had a terrible time thinking about it. As soon as she got home, I wanted to confront her about it, but I believe that having knowledge that the other person is unaware of gives you a lot of power. It will facilitate my ability to detect other potential lies. For example, when I asked her how her day went after she got home, she gave me a fairly straightforward account without mentioning any trips. I am here because I don't know where Ivan is. Is it better to go directly to her or try to get more information before I confront her? I'm leaning more towards the latter since I'm beginning to suspect that there might be something going on inside of me, and I feel like confronting her could increase the likelihood that the truth will come to light. Please share your thoughts with me. Update 1. Hey everyone, it's me, the one from the post about the Serbian man and the wife in the cafe. I have returned with a significant update. I discovered a lot about it, so let's discuss. It took me some time to summon the bravery, 
but eventually I made the decision that I had to pay whatever price to discover the truth, although I've never been one to smile at the thought of looking through your partner's phone. In this instance, I felt compelled to set my moral reservations aside and proceed. Thus, I took advantage of the opportunity to do it while she was sleeping. She had Ivan in her messaging app, of course, and they had been corresponding frequently. Since I was using WhatsApp, I was able to export the entire chat to a text file and send it from her phone to mine with ease. Of course, I took care to remove the evidence. I browsed her collection and saw a couple of photos of them grinning together in public settings, but nothing particularly damning. I also forwarded those to my phone. Once more, evidence was removed. After completing all of that, which took me approximately five minutes, I returned her phone to its proper place. After that, I read everything on my phone because in the event that you woke up unexpectedly, it was much less suspicious. And my goodness, what I saw spun my mind. Here's a transcript of a portion of the talk that you may find just as disgusting as I did. It happened after they had been talking about a book that my wife had suggested to him. Instead of using my wife's real name, let's call her Clarice. The primary protagonist, Clarice, kind of reminded me of us. Yes, I also had that thinking. The attractive girl who couldn't decide between him and her lover and the large, enigmatic man, directly in a message that followed, and numerous sultry sex scenes. I'm especially reminded of us in that section. Though in your situation it's a husband, I agree that sex is always good. Then a dumb emoji of laughter. Emojis of laughter from Clarice. Yes. And I believe that's what adds to the excitement and enjoyment. It seems so incorrect, even though I have never cheated before. I can't say that I truly regret it. The reason it's so heated is that it's incorrect. Yes. And I hope that this never ends. It made me go crazy. It was two in the morning, and I couldn't follow her at that time. So I went outside for a walk. I would have taken extreme measures. It was all but certain. It seemed like I spent five hours wandering aimlessly through the town, but it was only three in the morning when I returned. She was also still in her slumber. Do you know how it feels to discover that you are being unfaithfully cheated on? only to discover that your spouse is making fun of you and taking pleasure in carrying out all of the work behind your back. She was essentially taking pleasure in my ignorance of the circumstances, and that's what finally pushed me over the edge. It was not as if lying was going to be excused. She wasn't awake when I returned. I then reached for her phone, skipped to that specific moment in her chat with Ivan, and recorded it on her phone. I had to be absolutely clear that this was not a case of doctoring. It was obvious that Clarice thought she was living out one of her ridiculous novels, but it was abhorrent that I was forced to bear the brunt of it all. She is unaware that I am aware of this. Divorce talks are heating up. Really, there's no other course of action for this. I also have to watch her fall. Yvonne has to fall too, for my sake. I need them both to hurt, really hurt. And I'm not sure how I'm going to do this. Update no. It was magnificent when it was finished. This concludes the story of Ivan, a Serbian guy, and his bookish, deceitful, cheating wife, Clarice. They were completely unaware that they ought to have been far more concerned for me throughout this entire ordeal. Permit me to skim the more mundane portions of the narrative. One day, I parked my Uber across the street as Clarice left for work. I witnessed the extremely visible moment the process server entered the cafe and gave her the divorce papers. That pleased me greatly, and we then drove away. I went to work had a nice day, and at the end of the day I was so happy that there was not a single message or missed call from Clarice. She was aware that she had been duped and that pleading would not solve the problem. I perceived it that way, at least. That evening she returned, sobbing uncontrollably. Not that it's dripping from her nose. To be honest, she looked like a complete mess. Observing her in that state made me feel a little melancholy, and I put it down to the pieces of love that remained. It didn't last long, though. She would not stop asking what went wrong. Was that Ivan? It dawned on me that she had no idea how much I knew, even if she had leaks in her operation before she was unable to decipher. What I knew, she must have attempted to figure it out. In the end, I promised her. Not sure if it was better to let her know that I knew about Ivan or not. I didn't tell her anything more other than that I had seen her and that I had been holding it in that day when we had been strolling arm in arm. That's when she became bold and began to call me names and beg half the time. She said there was no grounds for divorcing her for it. It was inappropriate of her to continue seeing him. However, nothing was occurring between them and my insecurity was the reason for it. I was harboring jealousy. 
it seemed that she was unsure of whether to offend me or bow down. Ultimately, I told her to leave my residence, and she complied. That is where the real divorcing stage begins. I had a great time throughout that portion, since I am far wealthier than her. I stand to lose a great deal in a divorce, but I also have to pay a great deal more for quality legal representation, which is exactly what I did. Hire a competent attorney when you file for divorce. I can assure you all that it will be worthwhile as I own numerous photos of the couple, and after voicing my worries, the text conversations that unequivocally prove their adultery. Furthermore, my amazing attorney was able to identify transactions in her joint account that appeared to have been made for Ivan. The dates on several transactions matched the dates in the transcript of the complete text message in which he expressed gratitude to her for specific things, and it became quite evident that she was treating her Serbian lover boy with our money. I enjoyed watching the lawyer portray her as a gold digger. He did an excellent job at it. She gave it her all in the fight, but to be honest, I couldn't find anything noteworthy. I'm not a perfect guy, but I also don't have any shortcomings that would cause a divorce. I had pretty much everything I needed by the time the divorce ended. I retained my car and my house, and no alimony was asked of me because of that fairly high-profile affair and the fact that I had put her up with a lucrative business. Judge, I love you. Yes, she was able to keep the car I got her. That didn't seem like something I needed to worry about. And since she didn't walk away from the divorce completely empty-handed, it was simpler to accept what I took. This is my Mrs. My favorite part right now. Even was tough to get even with. It was really challenging. However, one day he was leaving the cafe, and I trailed after him around the bend and down the street. I grabbed his attention, made my introduction, and gave him a hard blow to the jaw. He looked astonished when I used my hand to bust his lip and knock him to the ground, even though it hurt a lot. Although I wasn't seeking a street fight, I would have accepted one if one had been offered. After that, he got up and went, which suggests to me that he realized he had no moral high ground on this one. It was satisfying. He knew he was having an affair, so I wish I could have done more. But that was sufficient for me and probably the best I could have done, short of filing a criminal complaint. Clarice followed. You are aware of the rent I was covering for her? It was due again, and this time it was pricey because her cafe was located in such a lovely section of town. Normally, it was due on May 1st, but she didn't come to me until the end of May when she sobbed over the phone and told me she was desperate to pay the cafe's rent, but didn't have the money. She begged and begged, but as I hung off, I urged her to sell the car to raise the money for it. Throughout that week, she called multiple times, but I didn't answer. Warning spoiler alert. When she called to start cursing me out, I learned that she had sold the automobile. At the very least, she claimed it was evil that I couldn't do anything to help her. I told her it was wicked to consider cheating on me to be thrilling and enjoyable. She had nothing to respond to that. I'm going to wait until May of next year to find out how she manages her rent. She'll lose the cafe, too, if the gods have their way, especially because she won't have access to my bookkeeper anymore. It's been delightful. To be honest, I recently become single and am quite happy and wealthy. I'm not going to lie, the divorce, the betrayal, and the infidelity hurt like hell. But you have to move on, right? That's my plan of action. We appreciate your support and guidance, as well as your continued presence.